Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter. And here I am back with part three of the Swap and Make with PM Artist Studio. Okay, before I even start the video, let's address this. I've got lots of schedules to meet this month and I have no spare time. I have to film this today and for once <laughs> we've got a bright sunny day. So please forgive me for the line. I'll try and work in this section of my board so that this isn't too distracting. But as I said, I don't have an option at the moment. So a couple of things I need to do now. We got this far. This is all ready to go. I'll cut this up in a second. These were the covers I made. Now on the edges of the cover, I'm I've on this one, I've actually put a gold line. I haven't done it on here. I just wanted to show you how I do it. So I've got a paint pen. This is just a Posca um, PC-5M. And all I do is I just run the Posca along the edge of my card. I'm supporting it with my finger underneath. And if I slip, I'd likely to slip that way because I've got the bit that's going to be stuck there. If I took this way, I'd slip over the surface. So just a bit of a tip there. Um, if you get the bit you're going to slip on to be the back, then it's not really an issue. So anyway, that just tidies up the edge of those. So... We'll come back to those when I come back to them. Let's just move that off there. So the covers are done other than decorating and finishing off. Now, let's address this for a start. Now, um, I need to cut this in half. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cut it with a scissors instead of a, a trimmer because people may not have a trimmer or may not have a guillotine. And to be honest with you, I don't trust my guillotine. It sometimes doesn't cut in a straight line. So I need to actually... This is eight and a half, so I need to make sure this is four and a quarter. And four and a quarter this end. Now I am going to put a line between the two. Because I'm not the best at cutting a straight line sometimes. It helps I could see the mark. There it is. So just going to cut that. Does that look right? That doesn't look right. So I just want to do a bit of, what's that saying? Measure twice, cut once. I did that wrong. Oh, it's nine, so it needs to be. Right, there you go. And that's why we measure twice. Right, not that this line matters, it's going to be, there's more to do on this background yet. Right, so if this is nine and a half, let's see if Kerry can do math live on a video. Nine and a half, that makes it four and a half, four and three quarters. So there you go, lesson to oneself. Check, check and double check. Am I off screen? I am off screen. Please forgive me for that. Four and three quarters. Which leaves four and three quarters. Yeah, that will be right. I thought something didn't look right there. So lucky I didn't use my guillotine because I would have just chopped that and then found out it was wrong. And guess what? Everything else would have been wrong as well. Because I've been trying to keep to all of the measurements I've made. Right, rulers away, Griffiths, rulers away. So I'm just going to cut down the centre of this. Now, as you heard me say, um, these backgrounds are not fully finished yet. I mean, they're almost, um, but I, I know that I'm going to be putting stuff in the background of some of them. Um, some of them may get more paint, some may get stamping on them. Some may even get a bit more white gesso to, if I think it's, it's too much of a background, it's too intense. I may knock it back a bit. Right, those should be the same size. And they are the same size. There you go. Right, now, I'm going to fold them into four. Where did I put that bone folder? There you go. Because this will make my pages. So this is the height. And this is where you can see this is going to be the cover of one of them. And that will show you. Remember, we, we did just a little bit around the edges. That's why. Okay, let's put that to one side. Now, the method I'm going to use is I'm going to fold it in half making sure my edges are together, walk my way back to 
the crease and then press it down. Now, it's going to be reasonably tough because obviously there's the thickness of the paint here. But I am going to try and press this down as flat as I can with my bone folder. And then I'm going to flip it back the other way to bend in the opposite direction. Now, there is going to be a bit of a build-up of paper and paint in, in this area here when it's folded, purely because of the nature of, nature of what I'm doing. When we're not dealing with just one sheet of paper, we're dealing with three at this point. So there will always be a little bit of a crease. Then I'm going to come in and I'm going to fold the ends to the middle. And once again, press it down, ends to the middle. If I try and line up the top and the bottom, we're probably going to be better off. Now I'm going to flip this open. I'm going to do the same in the other direction. It's the only trouble when you're using paint on stuff you're going to fold. You always run the risk that it's actually going to be bulking up. Now, something I do if I've got a painted surface and I don't want to roll, um, rub it. I will sometimes get a br brayer, which I use for my gel printing, and I will press it down this way. I find that's a little easier on my wrist than the other way. Now, the reason I'm being so picky about getting these creases as good as I can get them is because this is going to open and close in both directions. So let, bear with me. Now, as I always say, actually, you know what? I'm going to pause the video here and I'm going to jump ahead. And I'm back. So, oh, and the sun's gone. Right, so I've now got my Constantina bits. Now, I know this is going to be quite bulky. One thing I am slightly worried about is gluing painted surface to painted surface. Now, I have seen Patricia and Mariah use art glitter glue for this, so I'm going to trust their process, um, because why wouldn't I? Um, I don't really have... A, a preference as to what's the in, what's the out, what's going on the cover, what isn't going on the cover. So what I'm going to do first of all this, I'm going to take this and this, I should turn it up that way, and I'm going to stick these two together but I'm going to make a pocket in the middle. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to use our glitter glue and I've pushed this up to the fold here I want to make sure the top and the bottom are secure. Take my pin out of there. And I am going to glue it down the spine as well. Actually, I'm going to glue this one. So if I glue this one here. Now I'm going to be a little more heavy handed. Oh, thank you, Mr. Sunshine. A little more heavy handed than I am normally with my art glitter glue. Because as I said, at this point, I'm gluing a painted surface to a painted surface. And basically acrylic paint is pretty much a plastic. So I fold it over on the top of that and press it down. I'm going to open this back up so I can press it down properly now. And I'm just going to hold this in place for a little bit just to make sure it starts to grip. And once that's in place, Sorry about the clatter. I'm just going to grip that shut there. Just get some bulldog clips on this, to be honest with you, just so that everything is being held in place. Right, which is the other glued side. This is the other glued side. Oh, it's going to be tricky, isn't it? I'm going to have to fold it this way to do this. So it's the only way I can think of doing this so that it's actually going to be held securely will it glues and then this is the bottom right if it doesn't all stick and there is a chance it may not all stick then what i'll do is i will just come in and i will run run the seams through my sewing machine right okay things things are are a gluing should we say 
Right, I'm going to put this to one side. If I mess with it, it will end up falling into pieces. So, right, let's talk a little bit about what I'm planning to do with the inside. Now, I have got all bits like these. I've got bits of a printable that PM Artist Studio have sent me as well. And what I'm going to do is each of those panels is going to have a pocket or a tuck spot in it. The middle one you've just seen me make a pocket of, that one is going to have a journal card in it. And on the back of that journal card, I'll write the details of what the swap and make was about and the date and I'll sign it and put all the relevant details. So what I've done, and I did this bit off screen because I really didn't think you needed to do this. I pulled out scraps of book paper, um, music paper, coffee dyed paper, and I just took a piece of cream coloured um card really lightweight card as you can see because I don't want to add too much bulk and I made these journal cards now the journal cards are where did I write that they're three inches by four and a quarter which is 76 millimeters by 108 millimeters I'm hoping if I've done my math right these are going to fit into the pockets I create however what I want to do is I want to make these echo um, the colours that are actually on the pages behind them. So I'm pulling out my 5x7, my gel plate. Um, I've got all of the paints I used before and I, I pulled them out. And what I want to do is just basically put little hints of the colour and, and I pulled out a couple of the stamps as well. So maybe one or two of them will have stamps and these will then echo the background but they won't be as dominant because what I want is I want there to be a slight contrast between the background and the foreground and then once these are fully dried I can then stick things to them I can embellish them so that's where I'm at so I'm going to start with the green because I think I started with the green last time and not every one of them has to be identical I'm literally just brayering this out and I want to get just little tiny patches. See, I just, I don't want them dominated by one colour. Just, just want to put, um, they're slightly out of your shot. That's because I've got 14 of them. And my aim is to have 12 on the inside um, in pockets, one for the centre. And then I'm going to decorate one up to be the cover or the, the the focal point on the cover, should I say. So just tying everything together with the theme. So I should imagine this video is going to probably be at least an hour long because I'm getting very conscious. This is video number three. I was hoping to get this project done by video number three, but as you're obviously seeing, that's not going to happen. But I don't want to go past five. So if I have to do some shortcuts along the way now, I'm going to. But I think if I can get all the prep work done here, then the last video, which will be the next video, will just be about decorating stuff. Right. There you go, let's just clean that off my brayer. Just use a bit of this to clean this off with. This is just magazine page, guys. Just taking stuff off the plate that I don't want too much of. I'm also trying to bring in some of the colour that are on the scraps that um, Patricia sent me and Mariah sent me. Um, so I'm going to try and introduce some of this colour. The yellow will come in with the stamping, which I did before. I'm not going to put any pink into this. Um, I am going to echo some of the stamping with the lilac, though. Right, so the green is done. Um, I wanted to do some of that with the turquoise as well. So these bottles have got no labels, by the way, are just bottles that I've... Um, added different end of paints to so anything that's similar in color has just been added added to that bottle now i'm hoping to not have too much on here so i just want bits and pieces so if i run out of paint that does not bother me with this color as i said i didn't need all of them to look alike 
but if that ends up being the case then well that's not a problem either so this is just a quick way of doing a mass make now you could do this even without doing this project this could be a way of you just making up journal card backgrounds um i just took uh, A4 to me, which is probably in America, you would be grabbing letter sized paper. And I just, as I said, stuck stuck coffee dyed paper on it. I stuck music paper, some lined paper, just basically scraps, just to give me something of interest. Right. That's that out of the way. So what have I got left now? Um, I wanted this to be circles what did i want the green i wanted the black right i just need to put some green into this yeah maybe i will um there's i remember there's a dark green on some of the pages so i'm just going to do it i don't know whether everyone will have it i mean i could pull out a stencil and do it with a stencil but i'm not i'm not feeling i want to do that with these because I know that the, this is a background, only a background, and I want the other elements I stick on top to be featured. So let's just put it in two places on the, on the ones I've got. So you can see how quick this goes. Oh, she needs a bit there for a start. Oh, hello, son. Yeah, we've had some horrendous rain lately. Like, my back garden is no longer a garden, it's a swimming pool. It's just absolutely soaking out there. Um, I just hope the plants enjoy the drink. That's all I can say. Right, just clean that off there. I'll give this plate a really good condition once I've finished all of this, because goodness knows it's been through a lot during this project. Right, now I'm going to bring these in and I'm going to line them up closer together because that way I can stamp and capture more than one, one of them at the same time. I'm not yet sure what I'm going to do with the the one that's going to be the focal point on the front of this or the back because of course they can flip around right those two can go there um yeah because i don't need a lot right so where am i up to right in the original we had these and this was by oh my god i've forgotten his name eddie Eddie makes art. So I've obviously got the that link in the description box below. What I've done is any links that are on any of the videos, I put the same links on every single video. So whichever video you're on, you'll be able to see the links. So I'm just going to come in, pick up some paint. And as you can see, I can go across two or three of these at the same time. Just just adding elements. These are the sort of things that you see when you look into a piece. You'll see them in the background. Um, I'm going to do this all right. This is going to be sat onto a damp cloth so that then it doesn't dry out on me because if the paint dries out, I can't then reactivate it to wash it off, and I'd rather not build up paint on my stamps. All right, I'm gonna get most of this off because the next color I'm gonna be using is yellow, and I don't particularly, uh, not yellow, is lilac, and I don't particularly want to put um, lilac and yellow together because I'm not really sure that that's gonna be a pleasant color. Right. Oh, here comes the sun again. You can see the problem, can't you? I love working in natural light, but working in natural light has its issues. Right. I love this stamp. This is Silly Circles, I think it's called, or it's something along those lines. Anyway, I, I do like it. Actually, I wonder... 
just having a thought I might put some of them on here actually I'm just going to do this it'll be a little bit off screen I apologize just just to try and tie it through to the inside because the the detail was done at a different point or was done diff, different geographical place because that was done in Texas and this is being done in Cardiff right let's get this one cleaned up and then all I want to do now is I'm going to put some of those black circles on that I used before um, the nested circles foam stamp from Pierre Marta Studio and what I'm going to do is I'm only using the small, the center size, uh, purely because I don't I don't need to be doing the bigger size of it. Right. Lining these up so I can stamp across them. And I may put one of each on the cover as well, because that will very much tie them together, because this is quite a dominant feature, this black. It's still a little bit of Mars black. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, after I've done this bit of the stamping, I'm going to have to pause because I'm going to have to have a good old clean up. I don't want black hanging around. Yeah, I very often line things up to stamp. Um, and then once once the cards are used, of course, the stamps are never lined up again because, well, they're not normally lined up again. Right. That could do with a bit on it. I should rather it wasn't just a bitty bit. Now, some of this may get covered by the elements I'm sticking on here. Yeah, I think I want to put a little bit on each of the covers just to tie that all in and then this needs to go for wash time right i'm gonna to have to pause now um do i need anything else at this moment in time? no pause clear the decks make sure everything's dried and then we'll go back to that the folding piece get the cover on that so here i'm back again all cleaned up everything's over there drying let's pull in my folded pieces and see how they fared. I don't really want to have to put this through the sewing machine. Uh, for no other reason, I don't really want to put it through the sewing machine. So, it seems to have held. Yeah, I'd say that's, that's held. I think I've glued it together a bit much at the bottom. Doesn't matter about that, there's pocket going there. So this has given me the basis for my Constantina. And as I said, I've done it so I can fold it both ways. Do I mind if it's a bit rough and rugged? No, I don't. It all just adds character to it. Right. So the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that one of my tags fits into that pocket. And not tags, journal cards. So let's, moment of truth. I stuck it together. Typical. Because if I need to make this tag smaller, I can easily just trim it a bit. No, I think that'll go in there. Yeah, I don't want to force things at the moment. Oh, it's pulling apart there. I don't want to force things at the moment purely because everything is still a little bit on the wet side, including the journal card. Yeah, that will fit in there. I just need to actually just let things dry a little bit because I'm being a bit impatient. So um, let's see if I can get this hole punched. I wonder if I go through two layers in one go. That would be nice, but I'm not sure it's going to happen. Oh, okay. Whoa, I'm impressed with me. So, right. So I want to now think about how this is going to be now this is obviously going to be the front this will be the back or this will be the front this will be the back as far as covers go because the cover will be stuck onto these as you can see like that 
and then this cover will get stuck onto there so the whole thing will be enclosed then within and I just yeah there is there isn't there isn't a yes or a no really it's just get it stuck down now I'm wondering whether no I should be able to do this with fabric um with art glitter glue so I'm just going to come along now I could do the same as I did in the middle and actually attach this as another pocket but that just seems a bit overkill to me put on there Give it a comfortable amount of art litter glue, just, just for my confidence, if nothing else. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, I'm going to attach it quickly and then line it up. And what I'm trying to do is get the whole thing centralised. And I'm doing that because some of these pages stick out further than others, where I'm, I've been dealing with the thickness of paint. So I just wanted to make sure that this one is centered on here. And then what I'll do is I will then centralize the other cover with the front cover. Or for, I keep calling it front cover, the cover. It's not a front or a back cover, is it? In hindsight, I could probably have got away without having the brown paper as the core for my collage. I could potentially have just collaged the colouring book pages together. I want to pop that on there really quickly, stand it up so I can know the bottom fits. Right. Well, that's just thinking about itself. Put that to one side. I've got a ceramic tile here. I'm just going to sit that on top. And this is my weight. I've got this old flat iron that I've had for years. Can't remember where I got it. I've had it for years. I think it was from a friend's house we were clearing out when they passed away. And, and I grabbed it and I use it all the time to press papers and stuff down. So I'll put two boards and put this on top. Nothing's going to get away from that, I can tell you. Right, so that's doing that. Now, what's the next thing to think about? Now, when it comes to the pockets, I do have these things, which are UPO stencils, which I looked and played with these, and I think I can take a couple of these and turn them into tuck spots at least, or pockets, but I need to do that when that's dry. I also, where's the other stuff? Right. Here you go. This is all the stuff that Mariah sent me. Now, before I get into sticking pockets down, I do want to add some of these elements to the pages. Like, I want the crow. So this is why I wasn't too bothered by the edges cracking on some of the pages, because I want to come in and I want to use some of these prints around it. Now, I must admit, Mariah, I'm sorry. I'm not a pink person. I really don't think I'm going to be using the pink die cuts. I'm going to put these into my stash of die cuts, just in case one day I may need something pink, but I, yeah, it's not really my colour. And I'm at the point where I'm like, mm, no, there's so much colour going on here. I think if I put the pink on with the lime green and everything else, I would be getting in some serious trouble. Right, I love the crow. I've always loved the crow. Which one would make be better? This one's definitely going to get used. That one can get used. I like this bit of a motif here. And I think this is on wet strength tissue. So this will become part of the background. Or it could become part of one of the tags. Um, the wet strength tissue that I use, and I know PM Artist Studio use as well, is called Carnival Tissue Paper. Um, as far as I know, it's it's based in Britain, because um, I have no trouble getting it whatsoever. Although I have heard there might be a distribution centre somewhere in Europe as well. It can be a little pricey, but what I would say is, do your math, because... The size of the sheets is, oh, I can't even tell you, 
probably it's, it's big it, it's bigger than this it's basically i can cut a sheet into half and i have more than enough in in that supply i've just trimmed the edge of that for my uh 12 by 12s i'll have more than enough for a 12 by 12 and what i tend to do with those then is say i buy the big pack which is a few hundred by cutting them in half i've then doubled that again so if you do it you work it out pennies per sheet it actually works out quite inexpensive i think it's value for money as far as i'm concerned right i'm going to take this out of here because i want it Carnival only likes to tear in one direction. The other direction is a bit of a pain in the patooshie, really. Especially when you're someone like me who likes to tear things neatly. Right. Um, let's not have that other bird in here. I may only use part of this, but what I'm trying to do is just dissect things that I might be using for decorative elements. Right, this I'm going to put back in the little box because you never know when I'm going to use that. Now, in this bundle Mariah sent me, I do have, these are the flies and the, the other stuff I'm going to use as decorative elements. Not sure I'm going to use ukulele in that picture, but I'm going to put those in a little bowl to one side. Now, actually this, these are kind of what I need. I think I'm going to make the pockets out of these. That's probably the right colour scheme there. And what was this? This was Always Flowers Boho Style. Actually, how long are those? Where's my ruler? Four inches. How wide did I make everything? Four and a quarter. Hmm, I might, I might just cut that up and use that as the pockets. I don't know whether they're going to be big enough for... We'll play with that thought. So, right, put that back in there. So, I'll deal with that in a minute. So, what am I up to? I've got the cover on there. I've got the pages on there. I do want to put some of this stuff across pages to give myself some added stuff. Yes, I think that's what's next, right? Let's just, oh, the old weight off. I never think to weigh that thing. Right. So basically, here we are. So I've got enough for one, two, three, four, five, six. Oops, sorry, I knocked it. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve panels, as I thought. Then I've got one fits in here, thirteen, and then I'll choose one of these to actually have one of these panels put on the front, and then something on the front of that again. So. Not sure. I'm looking at these, wondering whether I need to add white to these. I might do, actually. I think before you see these again, I might come in with some of the white bubble wrap just to lighten these up a bit because they're looking a bit dark already and I don't want them to be dark. So, right. We will do all of the decorating in the next video. So let's just park that thought at the moment. But I want to get some of these onto some of these pages. So, I'm going to use, where's that, we've got gel medium here, and I want to put some of these onto here, and I want to choose the pages they go on to, so that I'm not causing myself any problems. I do not mind if they go across two pages. Right, let's see if I can tear this. I'm intrigued to see what Mariah is doing. Um, I've been filming this now for um, over about three weeks, to be honest, only because I'm slotting in filming when I've got time in my other filming schedule, uh, which I've got quite an aggressive filming schedule as far as I'm concerned. Um, trying to get two or three videos out a week is, is a bit much sometimes. Right. He will fit on there. I have to try not to rip his head off. Oh, that was close, Mr. Crow. Or Raven. 
Right, I'm wondering whether I want to tear around the edge of that. That looks like a bit too much, a bit too much darkness on there. What's that song? Hello, darkness, my old friend. Yeah, well, the raven's not going to have a whole ton of dark. So am I rambling today? I feel like I'm rambling. That'd be better. Let's take the edge of here. I'm leaving a little bit of the darkness around the ravens purely to outline them. I mean, I could go in with a Posca pen and really outline them if I really need to, but that's not really my intent. I think if he goes across there, there's going to be a pocket across there. Right, I think I'm going to get that put down, put these in the basket. Um, do I want to cover that with something? Let's just grab one of these, just so that I don't get stuff everywhere. Um, this is a brand I'm using only because I usually use Liquitex Basics Matte Medium Gel, and I love it, but I'm, I'm trying different mediums at the moment, um, purely because I need to see what's out there and see what options I have. Right. Pretty much just needs to go over everything, doesn't it? So this is another reason why you can see I wasn't overly bothered if if I had any cracking occurring. I just thought I have got the right bit, yes. I suddenly had this feeling I may have the whole thing upside down. Right. One little bit over. Let go already. There you go. I'm just going to put a layer of the matte medium over the top because I actually don't know what these were created in, whether they're inks or whether they're paints. I would imagine they're paints. Am I still in shot? I am. Um, but I just want to seal them up a bit, to be honest, because I really, I want to err on the side of caution, which is in my nature anyway. It doesn't feel like it's got anything underneath it. Did I paint matte medium under there? I swear I did. Maybe it just absorbed straight in. Right. So what I'm going to do, where am I up to on time? I should be okay. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing to two panels on the other side. I'm also going to take this element and I'm going to take this element and use them on this somewhere as well. So I'm going to call time on this video because the next video I should imagine is going to be a little bit longer because it's going to be completing the whole project. As I said, I'm trying to keep things to a reasonable length. Right. right there we go. So, so it doesn't, doesn't feel like there's a matte medium under there. Maybe I missed a bit. That's the joy of carnival tissue paper. It'll put up with quite a bit of manipulation. Right, so where I'm at, just put the lid back on that in a second. So I've got that done. I've got this to go on the other side. I've now made all of the 12 um, journal cards to go in. We've done the pocket, we've sealed it together. I've put the covers on front and back. That's a good day's work as far as I'm concerned. Um, in the next video, be warned, it is going to be a longer one. We need to decorate up all of those journal cards. Um, also, I need to decorate the covers and then it'll be finished. So excited, excited. But this really needs to have, I think, a period of time to dry before I do anything more. So thank you for your patience, guys. I will see you in part four. And fingers crossed, well, not fingers crossed, it's going to be the last section. I can absolutely assure you. It's got to be the last section. I don't have time to do any more. So, right. Enjoy it, guys. Thank you for your patience. Bye-bye now.